I had to do some reorganization of my work site here. We had to take a delivery of feed in this room today, so I had to move some stuff back and out of the way. Fortunately, I had to put this outside and I pushed this as far back as I could so that we could get the truck back up here and load straight into the room. I have moved our front axle back in here. Tonight, I'm gonna try and wire wheel this thing down and prime it, and tomorrow, we're hoping to paint kind of on a time crunch with this thing now. It is currently Wednesday night at like 10.30 ish, 11 o'clock I think it is now. Um, I don't have a whole lot of time to work on this tonight because we're fencing at the house right now. So I gotta be up early to work on some fencing with mom before it gets too hot outside. Come Friday, I think the owner of the property here, because we manage this and he uh, just allows us to use stuff like this, like the tractors and uh, the barns and everything at our leisure. But this is usually where he parks his truck. So he is probably going to want to park in here in the garage bay area. So I need to try and get this done by Friday night so that it's all out of the way and uh, it won't conflict with the uh, his garage space. So that means we'll probably have to put the deck on later on after he's gone. We'll do that under here where it's a little bit cooler out of the elements and I've got some light. But we're gonna get started on this tonight. I hope to finish this back axle, the stake, the draw bar piece right there and the big draw bar tonight. I'm gonna apl apply my last coat of green on them. I try not to spray both sides at the same time. I try to spray one side of it and then finish off the other. So, but this is a massive, massive difference. You can see it here just in the frame, the frame of the video that is, that these two frame pieces look entirely different. I just ignore the white bits that we haven't gotten painted, but that green looks a lot better than that green. I can't wait to see the whole thing come together and uh, see how it looks. I did identify something pretty cool here on this uh, front frame piece, front axle. It's hard to tell a lot of the stuff on here on, on this old wagon as far as decals and what's rubbed off, but I can tell here by kind of the particles and shapes of some of this. I know it might be impossible on video, but I can see some yellow here and what looks like used to be letters. So that I assume is where the John Deere logo was on this front axle. So I marked that down in my notes. I have brand new decals for this thing that should be an exact match to it. So I will be sure to add a logo right there on that front axle. Enough blabbering, it's late at night and uh, I got a lot to do tomorrow as well. So I'm gonna get to work and try and finish up what I can tonight before it gets too late.
Well, I had no expectations of this taking as long as it did. And I've gone through two drill batteries. And that's all I've got. Dad's got a bunch that I could borrow, but I hate to borrow them. So, and it's well past when I had planned to be home. It's almost 11.45 now, and I was planning on being home by 11.30. So I have only got a little bit left to do. I've just got to do this side right here of the tube, uh, a little bit more on the top, the insides, and just a touch up around this uh, little steering axle things. Otherwise, it's pretty much done. So it surprises me how well that wire wheel will knock them all knock all that rust off of there but unfortunately didn't get to any of the painting tonight but that'll be in this video so just can't do it tonight so y'all see me in the morning all right so we're over here at the wagon and i'm going to show y'all our second struggle we've been dealing with in this project so the wagon's got stakes on it that you can bolt your wood to so that you can create a deck on it or bolt your gravity wagon or whatever you want to do to it and one of those stakes was bent up i showed that in the first video and the reach pole was bent up so so I contacted a mobile welder, he came out, took a look at it, said, oh yeah, we can do that. Three or four weeks went by and he just couldn't seem to get out here. So I said, okay, uh, I gotta move on to somebody else because I gotta get this project rolling again. I'm, I, I hate to do that to you, but I, I can't wait forever for y'all to show up. So he didn't end up doing the project for me. I actually took both components into town to a welding shop and they gave me a quote that was about $40 more than what he was going to charge me and I told him what I wanted done. I wanted the pole straightened out and I wanted the stake straightened up and strengthened a little bit where it was cracked and they said oh yeah we can do that no problem the pole might be a little bit difficult to straighten up but the stake i think we could figure out I said okay let's do it dropped it off to him about a week later i hadn't heard anything so i called him and asked if they had finished and he said yep ran down there to his shop took a look let me show you all what it's this right here is what the stake is supposed to look like mostly straight pretty good looking this one's used obviously but it's perfectly good shape to put back on the wagon. Nothing wrong with it. This is what I received back. Yeah. Not sure how easy that is to tell, but that is still severely messed up. And I'm pretty sure it's worse than when I dropped it off to them. So I'm not going to trash them in my video. I'm not into that sort of deal. I did let the owner know how I felt about it and that I probably wouldn't be back. I was kind of disappointed with their work. He still made me pay the $200 and did not give me a return on anything. So that's what they did to the stake. My reach pole, however, I'll commend them on it. They, they did better over here in this department. Now, when you turn the pole up the right way, let's see here, the uh, the bend in it is not nearly as noticeable and it's much straighter. So I think that is, that's fixed enough for me to put it in the middle there without, uh, without it causing problems. I think it's not gonna cause any issues with trailing weird or excessive tire wear or anything odd. So we're gonna go ahead and use the pole. They did okay on that. I'm pleasantly surprised with uh, with how well it came out. It's not perfect. It's not perfectly straight like I would have wished, but um, it, it'll work. It's good enough for a farm wagon that doesn't go over 25. Very disappointed with the stake. I'm okay with the pole. They deserve what I, I paid them for the pole. Not too happy with paying for that stake and uh, them messing it up. Not that they will even probably see this video, but I wanna thank the fine folks at AgPro and Bainbridge. We are not people to usually go to a dealership for anything. If I can avoid going to a dealership, I do, because I just, I seem to have bad experiences every time I go to a, a dealership. Pushy salesmen, expensive parts, etc. The folks at AgPro, uh, the John Deere dealership in Bainbridge, Georgia, were excellent. Walked in there, told him what I was dealing with. He told me they'd have a steak on order and it'd be here as soon as possible. So I didn't even know that John Deere had still produced the steaks for these wagons. Turns out I was able to cross-reference the part number from the old, old catalog that's on the, the website because John Deere doesn't have a catalog anymore for uh, an actual like digital catalog for uh, the 1065 wagon. They do however have one for the 1065A and it gives you the option to order it through a dealer. I was able to cross-reference the number between the 1065 and the 1065A and find out that they 
both use the same stakes. So uh, he got me one ordered and it should be here. He said the closest will be this coming Wednesday. The latest will be about two weeks from then. So he said they're really short staffed at their warehouse. Who isn't short staffed right now? It seems like I hate all the excuses, you know, it's happening. So either way, the folks at the dealership were uh, excellent. So and I really appreciate their help. So I'm sure I'm going to be back to them quite a bit when we start working on the square baler that this uh, wagon is going to go behind. So there's our struggles. We are uh, mostly in good shape now. Hopefully tires will be here, get them slapped on, use the pole, and new stake will be here at some point to uh, start putting that deck over there on this thing. So today I'm going to work on painting again. I gotta clean up my work area here a little bit. The ducks have found this area, as you can see all the duck poop everywhere, unfortunately. We'll get this all cleaned up here. We're gonna get to painting. We'll get this back axle finished today, hopefully. Um, get the draw bar finished. We'll get started on the front axle. Hopefully finish on the stakes and the draw bar that I do have. And uh, I wanna paint the nuts and bolts as well. So I've got a, uh, a bag somewhere around here of brand new hardware to, uh, to put on most of this thing. So I'd like to get those nuts and bolts painted. So let's jump uh, right into the work for today. Well, we have finally got some prime on the front axle. That took long enough. I've been waiting to try and do that for probably three or four days now. And it felt like one thing after the other just kept happening that I couldn't seem to get out here and do that. So, but it's done now. It's, uh, it's taken care of. So we're gonna give this about 30-ish minutes to dry. We will flip it over and do the bottom side, which shouldn't take very long. The, I got most of it just from the top side. So we will give it some time to dry up and do that. And same here with the pole. In the meantime, since these have been sitting out for a few days and the draw bar, um, I'm gonna get them cleaned up a little bit and prep for paint again. Uh, they're not gonna need another coat of primer or anything. Uh, they're just dirty crap flew in here when it was raining and whatnot. So just gonna clean them off, get them ready to be painted. Probably go over here in our bag of new hardware. I am probably going to attempt to uh, put some green paint on. So that'll be fun. I'm just gonna put on the hardware, just some rattle can, just do some green on there. Not worry about getting the sprayer out that's right there. I am gonna get that out tonight and I'm gonna hopefully get all the stuff that I'm working on priming and cleaning up painted. So I'm hoping to have the back axle completely done tonight. Then I can start putting some decals on it. So that'll be pretty neat. All right, so I had to run to the store and go grab another can of primer. I'm up to, uh, this isn't even all of them here. I have used four of these cans now, I think. And I've got the, let's see if I can find one here. And I've also got these and I've used two cans of these. Um, they do pretty much the same thing. One's just gray, the other's white. And I had to do that on this axle actually. And you can't even tell where the gray was versus the white once you get the green on. So it doesn't really matter. Just use what I had available. These bottles are a little bit bigger and they last a little bit longer, but they seem for some reason like more of a pain 
pain to use than the little white ones, so oh well. So I think I'm finally in a position now to go ahead and spray down some green. We got the front axle. We got the front axle all primed and ready to go, I think. It looks pretty good. It's almost dry, um, so I'm guessing by the time I get to it, as I'm going to work my way down, it will be dry and ready to apply some green to. We are making some good progress here, and uh, I think it's time to get the paint sprayer out and finish spraying some green. Man, that is always the most fun and quickest part is actually putting on the paint, it seems like. Wire wheeling it down is no fun, and priming it isn't all that fun. It doesn't seem to go very fast, but it is a crazy transformation once you get this green on. So we got the back of that axle finished, I think. The top of this pole, this straw bar is painted on both sides now, and we've got the bottom side of this front axle. So, and also did the stakes and the front of the drawbar over there, the actual hitch itself. A majority of this thing is done. So all I've got to do tomorrow, flip this axle over, uh, paint the underside of it real quick. Well, what would be the top, what should be the top, and uh, finish this pole. We will be done pretty soon with this thing, honestly. I think come tomorrow night, we're just going to be waiting on tires uh, for the wheels. That state before we can go ahead and put the deck on. So everything is pretty much painted. Now, feels like it has taken forever, which it kind of has. It's taken about a week to do this. About a week and a half, actually, to get this thing painted down, so. So mom had suggested that I show y'all how we clean my hands after I've been painting. They aren't that bad tonight, but there's definitely some green, and I look like the Hulk here. I got some green hair going on. So, what is this concoction that you've made up for me? That is a mix of pure baking soda mixed with um, orange oil and uh, Thieves household cleaner. This stuff works magic, especially when you add some orange oil to it. So, I take a handful, cut like this. And I just work it in for a few minutes. And after a short time, I'll add in some orange oil. But you can already see it starting to rub off in certain places. And this has been on me for a good 30 minutes. It's actually started to like dry up. So this is not fresh paint. Put some orange oil in there. I'm working on it. That's okay. There we go. Alright, so I think it's about time to see what the results are. Sometimes it takes two attempts, but it gets most of it off first time. I'd say 90% of it. And it leaves your hands feeling really good afterwards. I'd say it worked pretty well. I had a little bit on the top of my middle finger there and uh, a little bit on my nail there, but otherwise it cleans you right up. I'd say that works. Better than the toxic stuff.